Well, um, our next uh, uh, gracious speaker, who had agreed to come at the last minute here, <laughs> um, is here from our Office of Information and Technology Services. This is Mike Perrin. He's the Chief of Staff there. And thank you so much for being here, Mike. <laughs> so I get a call at 7.30 this morning. That's <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, <laughs> um, so here you go. I'm going to turn this over to Mike, and he's going to talk. Yeah, is this still on? Yes, it is still on if you prefer to use this. Just speak right into this. Um, we're just uh, putting the slide deck up right now. And, uh, and so Mike is going to talk about an opportunity that's coming up for local governments. Sure. Um, again, uh, my name is Michael Perrin. I'm with uh, New York State ITS, and my, name, my title is Chief of Staff. But a little bit, what I want to talk about a little bit is about what ITS is, and I want to get right into the meat of what um, ITS can offer to local governments in the state of New York. So a little bit about me. Uh, I've been in uh, state and local government for about 30 years, on and off, starting with Onondaga County Highway Department, um, and now uh, with the governor's office, or have been with the governor's office, with OTDA, uh, DHSES, and a couple of other agencies. So I've been around the block a little bit, so I kind of get it. So I get where you're coming from, and I spent 15 years in Albany County government. So, you know, I feel your pain, uh, but hopefully by the end of this presentation, which is going to be brief, uh, I will show you some opportunities that ITS can offer. So ITS was formed in, uh, by legally formed in uh, 2012, and operationally really began, be become operational the, you know, the following year. So it's, we have, we, we have 3,600 employees, what we did was take about, at the time, uh, 4,000 people and basically took them out of the agencies. I don't want to put it that way. If there's any agency staff here, they'll feel bad about that. They still feel bad about that. And we took their money, too, and their appropriation and cash. So the, the issue, uh, there's, you know, there's a budgetary issue that I really won't get into here. So right now, we, we serve about 130,000 employees. Uh, endpoint connections are well over that, uh, around 200,000 uh, that we support, meaning uh, mobile devices, desktops, and everything else. 53 state agencies, uh, and they all had a separate CIO at the time when the agency was formed. So now there's one CIO in the state of New York. So we're about a $650 million agency. Um, I think that's an underestimate. The amount of data that we have, 25, 25 petabytes, we back up more data every night than the, the entire country of Canada. So we have, we've consolidated all our data centers down to two. So we have one data center uh, here in Albany at the Zen Building. If you've never seen it, We'll try to find an opportunity for you to see it. It's like crazy cool. Uh, and then we have a backup site um, that I probably can't discuss. And so we, we back that up, you know, every night. And we, you know, again, we back up more information, more data, more terabytes every night than the entire nation of Canada. So this is what we do. You know, ITS, are, we are very, very mission-driven. We're client-centric. We are focused on, on our process, and we are focused on serving the people of the state of New York. So I say very often that there's really no problem that's, uh, that there's a, really a technology problem. It's a business problem. It's a, it's a data problem in some cases, and it's a regulatory and legal problem. There's nothing that technology can't solve. So this is really what I wanted to get to. So what we've been talking about uh, very recently is doing uh, shared services arrangements with local governments, um, primarily with the counties. Um, everyone who's from county government here knows that uh, New York State has been connected with the counties for 20 years or more, pr primarily on human services uh, systems. 
but now you know, we want to leverage the infrastructure that New York State has and the investments that the state of New York has made in the state data center and is made in 1,400 miles of fiber that we own and maintain. You know, so you're all probably familiar with uh, you know, the fiber backbone that goes down the thruway uh, and, and NYENet. So we want to leverage that to help you know, local governments. So we've been talking with all the counties. Uh, we've been talking with several cities who have been interested. Is Syracuse here? Yeah. So I think Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, uh, Plattsburgh, uh, Yonkers, we've been in active uh, communication with them. And we want to you know, make some offerings about what we can do. So we have co-location services, meaning you can have a rack in our data center. And we've got very attractive pricing, by the way. So it's about a thousand bucks, you know, a month. So uh, this is published. We have an MOU that's been approved by our council uh, that we're at, you know, we're happy to share with anyone here. And you know, again, we want to leverage what the state of New York has already invested in our con connectivity and in our data center. So recently, some questions have come up about whether or not NYENet or other state-owned uh, you know, uh, pipelines uh, can be used. You know, we're not quite there yet, so the answer today is I don't know. Um, you know but it, we're it, it's it, it. We've you know we've checked the market on this, and we think it's a pretty attractive pricing model. So, kind of works. So that was it. I really want, just wanted to get to that. I wanted to get to the shared services component here. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take, take them at this time. Or I think you all have my contact information. So. Okay. Is there one back here? Just a question. Um, does this have to go along with the, I'm sorry. Does this have to go along with the shared services commitment that we're trying to work with within our county no. to, to, to qualify with this particular program? No, no it's not necessarily tied. Um, that's a good question because we could talk about that and we have not talked to the governor's office about that specific point, um, but the answer is no. Well, I have a question. Uh, sure. If, or Mitch has a question. Well, I'm going over to Mitch, I'll ask. Uh, does the rack price include the uh, server in the rack, or is that just the rack space? Just the rack space, cooling, power, um, and we have an escalator in there for power, you know, cost changes, electri and electrical. You know, if, you know, if there's an increase in, in utility rates, that's going to be built in. Minch Lewis from the uh, Maxwell School. So, how much does this really replace our internal? Uh, data processing, uh, you know, equipment and, and uh, capacity. You know, it's kind of up to you. You know, so it's kind of up to, you know, every individual county, city, town, uh, because you, you're going to have to figure out whether or not it makes financial sense because, you know, the prices that we're offering were competitive in the market. So you know, if, if it makes sense to you, but I would say that, uh, you know, the data center that we have at uh, the Zen building is a tier three plus quality data center. So you're, you're, there's a real value added there in terms of security, physical security, data security, and everything else. So you know, I've, I've been around state government for a while, and I've seen server racks that are crucial in a closet someplace with a, with a box fan to keep them cool. You don't have that problem here. So that that so that's the value added. So if anybody thinks a thousand dollars a month is a lot, then think about the value added. Um, I don't see anybody with a hand up. Uh, I do have a, one question I want to reiterate that came up earlier in the conversation about open data. Yeah. Uh, local governments asking, particularly small local governments, about assistance mm -hmm. publishing their data as open data. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's been a, a program available in the past. I don't know what the status of it is, but if you... Uh... Sure. So uh, we're in the middle of a, developing a, a, a statewide 
data strategy right now. And I hope I'm not telling any secrets out of court here. Um, but, uh, so we're in the middle of developing a statewide data strategy that will put together an outline of how New York State does this and how New York State public data gets managed. Right now, you're all familiar with New York Open Data and the websites that we have up there. Uh, but right now, I think to answer your question, we don't have any particular assistance in helping local governments publish their own data. It's, it's really an expansion, but I, I went to, um, you know, a, a SAPA candid conversation the other day uh, with the uh, Board of Elections talking about cyber uh, security. And I know they're, they're probably working with you, but they, um, uh, they're working with counties. Uh, the parts of the machines, they're all separate. They're not really connected. But then when they get to the, the parts where the counties are connected to the State Board of Elections, it really depends on each county's capacity uh, to deal with that. So I know they're really trying to figure out ways to help those. And they said sort of offhanded way, you know, if just if uh, counties or local governments could take advantage of the New York State email system, the securities that are built in there would solve a lot of cybersecurity problems. So I'm just questioning in the future or what's the direction of so, ITS in those kinds of things? Yeah, well, so thanks very much. That, that's a really good point. We've spent a lot of time with Board of Elections among other agencies um, and local governments. Um, so, you know, my, first of all, your point is well taken that in New York State election systems are, are, are very, very decentralized. So I personally am not too concerned about a cybersecurity issue with New York State Board of Elections. I really am not. But to your point is I, near, we're not quite there yet in terms of New York State taking responsibility for your email traffic or for your uh, website firewalls. So we're, we're partially there. So we, will, we can do the co-location, we can do disaster recovery, and we can certainly help with cybersecurity consulting, is the way I put it. So no, directly, no. We're probably not in a position right now to help every city, count, county, and town uh, you know, filter you know, your email through our, what we, we have FireEye now on, on state email system. Uh, we just installed Palo Alto for our uh, website firewalls. So we're, we're, we're not ready to go there yet, and we don't have the capacity, and frankly, to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure we want to take the responsibility at this point. 